I'd like to invite our next speaker, Sri Randhir Singh, an electrical engineer from NIT and an MBA from IIM Calcutta, currently working with Niti Aayog as a la lateral entrant at the director level in e-mobility vertical. In his stint with Niti Aayog, he leads the EV policy accelerator program under which Lighthouse states UTs are selected in challenge mode and are supported in framing, reviewing and implementing the EV policies. Well, can we please welcome Sri Randhir Singh. Can we have a big round of applause before he takes stage? Thank you very much for your precious time. First of all, good morning. I'm the person who actually handles something which actually pollutes a lot this environment. But how I am related to this? So before delving deep into how and what we are doing, as soon as I entered, some gentleman was talking about, you know, the plastics, plastic waste and all. What we see here, just see in front of, uh, front of you, everyone. And, uh, you know, I always believe in walk the talk and that is what even the and uh, that, so how much waste in this country is, gets collected and recycled? That is something which I think all of us must be aware very much. Uh, only 4% of the total waste is organized, which actually reaches to the recyclers. So we did one study. Uh, it was published uh, in February 2021. It was about the recycling of the lithium ion batteries. But what we did is we visited all the 66 registered recyclers in this country for the electronic products, electronic uh, waste and all. Out of these 66, what we find is four produces the black mass. Rest all are only either importing the black mass or using the black mass you, uh, produced by somebody else. Out of these four, he took the name of the Atero, we visited the Atero also. There is a, another company called Exio, I don't know whether the representatives are here or not. So, out of these four, country, four uh, organizations, two produces the black mass and then they export it. You know, exporting the black mass is a sin. That is actually a black oil. We should actually ban the export of black mass. Because all the minerals, everything comes out from the black mass only. Finally, the original minerals which, are, which have gone into this. Atero does the recycling and up to 95% of the original minerals comes out of them. And that is one of the highest in the world. And if you compare that company with respect to the companies who are doing the recycling and around 80 to 85% of the minerals which are coming out from them in the West as well as in the Korea and other places, the valuation stands almost one-tenth. That is what the status or, you know, the financial status of these companies, the recyclers are in our country. So what we have to do? What are the things which we need to do? Now one big daunting challenge which is coming out in front of this country is the used lithium ion batteries. We already have almost 30 plus gigawatt hour of the lithium ion batteries which will come out in next two years. And they will be looking for the, not only for the recycling, but the refurbishing. So what happens, why suddenly these, uh, this influx of batteries is going to come out in this market? The main reason is the adoption and the proliferation of the electric vehicles, which actually uses the lithium-ion batteries. And they are quite new, not from even the lithium-ion battery technology perspective, but for the recyclers, it's very, very new. Because they are doing till now that the button cells, only the smaller cells, the, which goes into the consumer electronics, nickel cadmium cells, which goes into your mobile phones and all, and the cameras. These were the only uh, things which they were recycling till now. And now the learning process has started, the R&D process has started for all these companies. And coming out with the 95% of the original minerals is a big achievement. And that is what is being targeted through the policies also. You, you have seen the, uh, uh, you know, the battery-based management rules which has come out last year. And in 2021, the draft was released. So we took almost more than one year to finalize the battery-based BWMR is what we say, battery-based management rules. Although we have in place the solid-based management rules, the electronic-based management, also the part of that, EPR responsibilities are there. 
So we, we are talking about the EPR responsibilities, we are talking about the waste best, uh, uh, battery waste management responsibilities, but there has to be the targets which needs to be fixed for these recycled materials to be used again. That is how this urban mining, I actually call it urban mining instead of the circular economy, because you are actually mining the used minerals. So this urban mining has to be promoted and that is why what we are saying is that the original battery manufacturers, they should actually start using some of the minerals which are coming out through this recycling. And uh, in this area is what we are working the next. In fact, Germany has already released a mandate EOIs in 2027 up to the 7%, in 2030 up to certain percent, I don't remember the figure. This much original mineral which has gone into the product has to be used for the new manufacturing. And in fact, in these lines we also need to work. Uh, in addition to this, one very important thing which has come out recently is the scrappage policy. It, is all, it also forms a part of the circular economy, but how this will be, you know, you scrap your vehicles. It's not only the scrapping and replacing it, but the vehicles which has been scrapped, you need to again take out the, you know, useful minerals, products, materials out of that. Not everything should go into the recycling. Few things should go into the refurbishing also. Because, you know, in terms of the battery cells, if you are not aware then, the cells which are used or the batteries which are used in the mobility, when they reach to the 80% of their SOC, after that they are not, no more useful for the vehicles, but they are useful for the secondary power. Second life they are useful. So you can actually refurbish them and use it for the second life. But you know the funny part is the cells which are right now in the market, you cannot actually take them out or refurbish. So there the design thinking for the OEMs has to be forced upon or it has to be done in consultation that please manufacture your modules, your cells, your battery packs in a way so that it is refurbishable because it still has 80% to 20% you can actually use it like its life for the secondary purpose, you know, in homes, in the towers. Uh, even in the renewable integration also you can use these refurbished cells. So if you are not refurbishing it, you are actually doing again one more sin, right? So the refurbishing part is also what we are targeting. So in this aspect we are coming out with another report and it has been done in consultation with the recyclers across the world. We visited some of the recyclers across the world, uh, lithium ion battery recyclers basically. Uh, the idea is that we have only two to three recyclers who actually does the recycling. Why I am saying this? Because the original minerals coming out of these factories for the lithium ion batteries, there are only two to three re recyclers. One does the 95 percent, another does around 30 to 35 percent. Because these are not economical if you go up to the last mile for, for uh, getting the original mineral out of the used batteries. So we need to actually make this economics work also for these recyclers. So all these things together, one more important part is how we should maximize the use of the first asset. What is the first asset in terms of the transportation? The first asset is your vehicle. The second asset now has become the battery. So now you are dealing with the two different assets. So why not decouple these assets? So that is why we have come out with another thing which is called the battery as a service. And it is actually very, very important why the ownership doesn't reside with the individuals. The ownership is still with the OEM. So e fixing the EPR responsibility is very easy. In addition to this, we, are, we have also come out with the draft UIN number, unique identification number, which will actually penetrate up to the cell level. So you can track and trace each and every cell coming up uh, coming out in the system. So whether it has been recycled, whether it has been sent to the refurbishing, both the things you can actually track. The entire life cycle of the cells can be tracked through these UIN numbers. So I, I think these are some of the steps which are in the right direction, but of course the industry has to up its ante. Industry has to finally come out to comply with all these things. Because finally, you know, you might have heard in this budget itself, around 33,000 compliance burdens has been removed, around 3,500 compliance burdens has been decriminalized, 
and in fact this is an addition to the 15,000 compliance burdens which are reduced and Prime Minister actually declared in 2021 on 15th of August. So this is an addition to that. So, you know, when something is forced, that means some inspection, some penalty and other thing comes with this. To avoid this, industry has to come out with their own, you know, guidelines. They have to come out with their own standards instead of, you know, the agencies like BIS, like AIS, forcing something upon them so that the compliance burden should not increase, but then you comply with the this circular economy and the sustainable means. Thank you very much.